What's up, Traders Edge? It's Mark Sebastian, your only option with your midweek update. Today, I'm going to tell you what's happening in the market, what levels I'm watching, why this might be a repeat of history, um, when to go long, when to, what, when to stay short, and uh, we're going to take a look at the VIX. Uh, let's dig in. As I'm recording this, it's down about eh, four tenths of percent. The story is really the cues, and the cues have been were the story on the rally. Now they're the story on the sell off. They are way, way below the 50 day moving average, way below the 21. Um, Try to rally today before absolutely tanking. What's driving this? ASML. This is the first semiconductor to report, and um, they did not guide well. So what does that mean? That is bad news for just about every other chip maker. So you look at SMH, which is the semiconductor holders ETF, and you can see the way it is getting destroyed. It's down two and three quarters percent. Uh, NVIDIA is its big, biggest holdings, but we're talking AMD, Intel, Micron, uh, Qualcomm, you name it. And those names are getting punched in the face uh sold off pretty significantly and considerably and that is what is driving us lower remember chips brought us up because of ai and now chips are starting to take the market down um but back to spx so we tried to open up we tried to gap up about 20 points uh i have now turned around and we're down so we were uh, we've had a one percent range on wednesday um, vol continues to remain extremely high. So when do I know, Hey, maybe it's worth going long. And the answer is not, we have a weak gap up of, a, of less than half a percent. Here's when to know that it's time to go long. When we have a opening day down big, and then we rally, that is what you're looking for. Just about every major sell-off ends that way. Um, so what are we looking at right now? Well, I want to tell, show you how this is a bit of history repeating itself. And to do that, we're going to look at the VIX and I want to point out what typically happens on a vol spike. And, and this is a vol spike. So we'll go back to October and in October, and this is key, October, 2023, you, you get the, this beginning rally. And then you have a couple of days of vol easing back before you take another leg higher. Uh, you can even have a little a little, a little, little vol sell-off in between, and then you take a leg higher. You go to um, COVID, all right? And you even get that during COVID. You know, we get a little pop, and then vol doesn't do anything, then we take off. And if I go back further, back to 2018, I know this is hard to set. It's hard to see, um, but you know, this is 2019, I want 2018. Oh, I need to go all, that's why. Uh, and But if you go back to 2018, right here, what do you notice? You get a little bit of a pause and then you take off. Uh, if we went to 2016, same story, uh, about the only one that doesn't have that huge spike, that huge little, little relax is the AUG 2015, even 2012 had that type of behavior. So that I think we're in the middle of a little bit of a VIX pause. And then I think we could take a leg up. I think SPX, if I now I'm going to go to a, I want to go to a one year. I think SPX at a minimum, we're going to fill this gap. This was the fed gap from February and, um, we had closed 4980, uh, 49 to be exact. So another 40 bucks. And then from there, it would be the last time that we had, you know, a, a real 
kind of dip and pause below the 21, and that would bring us down about 4,700. I don't know if we're going to get all the way to to the 200-day moving average at 4,600, but I wouldn't be surprised if we tested 49 or even 4,800. Um, when I look at VIX, kind of going back to VIX, let's look at that term structure. And April's gone, but we continue to be in this this structure where VIX is above the futures. And when we're in that structure, it's telling you the market is going to go wild for at least uh, until we start hitting some more of these tech earnings. I think you're going to see pressure on the S&P 500 and more importantly, pressure on the NASDAQ. That AS, Those ASML earnings were huge. So don't take those too lightly. That could lead to a couple of days of selling at least until we get another major chip manufacturer. So um, AMD doesn't report till the 30th. Intel is the 25th. Um, Micron's no time soon. Qualcomm, May 1st. Um, Marvell, May 30th. And NVIDIA is not till the end of May as well. So, um, you know, it may be Intel, Intel and AMD earnings. So that would put us at least to the 26th. I think they're going to be paying attention more to AMD. So that would be uh, April, uh, you know, if Intel reports something good, uh, that could really rebound the chips. But Intel probably won't hurt it if it reports bad because Intel is Intel. But uh, AMD comes out soft. Now we've got, um, that's where we get a position to, I think, hit the 200. But for the time being, um, I think we've got the VIX is going to break 20 and you're going to see markets, the S and P at a minimum, break that, that gap level at 4980. So at a minimum, I've got another 40, 50 points lower. Um, but I think more likely we're going to see close to in between 49 and 4,800, uh, between now and Intel earnings. All right, folks. Um, if you don't want to worry about earnings, the best strategy for any market is weekly profit cycles. This is Andrew's strategy of uh, tr trading VIX and SPY together, and it has been fantastic through all of this. Uh, it is the best non-correlated strategy that I've seen out there, and it has an embedded crash protection, which I really like. All right, folks, um, you want to join? Give my team a call, 888-872-3301. Uh, that was your midweek update. I'll be back with more as the week continues. I'm Mark Sebastian, your only option. Have a good